Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about compositing and how you can effectively composite actually really quick. And if you've never composited before, it's, it's a very uh, big word for take an element of one photo and put it onto another photo and make it look as if they appear like they belong together. Uh, it's really fun to do, but it can be really frustrating. So I'm going to do something kind of fun with it uh, for my wife's blog called StickyMarshmallows.com. Her blog is awesome. She talks about baby's life, food, and all kinds of good stuff. And every once in a while, she has me photograph her work. And I don't mind, because it's good practice for me. And she makes awesome food, and then I get to eat it. This is one of those objects. It's called a cake ball. And it's basically a, a cake pop without the popsicle stick in it. And it's a ball of cake with like a chocolate peanut butter frosting on it. Just, it's amazing. So I want to give this like that epic feel, like it belongs on a movie poster. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a selection of it. I'm going to go to my quick select tool, and not my zoom tool, I'm going to go to my quick select tool and start selecting areas. I like to use a very small selection brush. You can press the right bracket key and make that selection brush bigger, and the bigger you make it, the bigger the selections it's going to make, which is perfect for something like this, where it's not very intricate, but when you get into an intricate selection, it really helps to make that brush a little bit smaller. And let's say it went outside. Oops. Don't worry about that. Just press and hold Alt, and then click again. That will subtract any area that you accidentally grabbed. Okay, and this next part is one of the most critical parts when you're doing any compositing. Is you once you've made that selection, go to select, go to modify, and go to contract. I usually contract it by about three pixels. Actually, let's go. Yeah, three pixels will be good. And all that really did was take my selection and pinch it in a little bit, at all on all sides. And then I'm also going to go to select, go to modify, and go to feather, and do that by one pixel. And you're, so you're going to see where I'm coming from in a second. Now we need to double click this background so that we can make this a mask and make it an editable layer. If you, editable, not edible. I'm thinking about food. Anyway, if you want to see what this mask has done, you can press the forward slash key when you're selected on the mask, and it'll show you in red anything that is masked out. You can also press shift and click on the mask to make that mask go away for temporarily to see what your mask changed and you can shift click on it again to bring it back. So now we're going to press V to move this onto our background. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to make this, uh, press control T and make this about the size of a little bit, a little bit bigger than our hay bale there. And then rotate it a little bit. Now, when you modify the size like that, press and hold shift and move from the corner. This will proportionally move your, uh, your object in scale so that you don't make one side lopsided or you know adjust incorrectly. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like if you don't do that step. I did that step that I talked about. These edges look like they kind of fit on that background, right? If you don't do that step where you feather the edges, they look rough and they look like they don't belong on the background. So it's really important that you do that step where you feather those edges in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. Oh, cake balls everywhere. All right, so now I need to make this look and feel as if it belongs. Let's look at our background real quick. See this hay bale? We're going to use that hay bale to kind of build our composite off of this image. Look at the background, that background light, that's our light source. That's where we're getting our light from. It's going to be shining onto the back of this cake ball. Therefore, we need to make it look as if it's shining onto the back of the cake ball. It's going to be dropping a shadow right here. So I'm going to double click on this layer too. I'm going to make a drop shadow. There's many ways you can do this drop shadow. I like to do it this way. You can do it whatever way you want. And I'm sure there's tons of people out there that do it differently, and that's fine. So I'm going to adjust the spread and really give that like a shadow feel to it. Press OK. Now I'm going to right click on that effects and go to uh, make or create layer. Now I have an editable layer, shadow layer. It even says right here, layer two's drop shadow. Now I can make a mask on that and press B and paint in black on those areas that I want to disappear. I'm gonna use my, my Wacom tablet brush and make things go a little bit faster. So I'm going to just paint away those areas. I want to make that look like it's a shadow. If I if I took away too much, I can press X to flip back and forth between black and white and paint that shadow in. Okay, so I'm happy with that shadow. Ooh. We're going to see what's going on in the background anyway, so let's not worry about that. 
All right, so now I want to make this look as if it appears. I mean, look at the difference between um, this cake ball and the background. The range of color is different. You've got a nice subtle tone in the background with that subtle warm wash that's going on with this HDR image, but in the foreground we have this cake ball that doesn't really fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background and move that up on the top. And now I'm going to go to Filter and go to Blur and go to Average. I learned this trick in uh, Matt Kleskowski's Layers book. If you don't, if you've never purchased the Layers book or read through Layers book, you should. It's a really great book, and you learn a lot of cool tips like this. So now that I've got an average color of what's going on with this whole image in the background, it's basically taking all those colors, slamming them all together, and giving me an average. I can go press Soft Light and really kind of make the two kind of fit like they they belong together. It's like making a sandwich almost with belonging a belonging sandwich sounds kind of weird so now what I also want to do is I want to duplicate this layer again the uh, the cake ball layer and give it a really strong high pass because I have this HDR background I need an HDR esh feel and how I get that is to go to filter and go to other and go to high pass and make a really strong high pass uh, let's go with like um, 25 to 27 that, that works and I'm going to press Control Shift U, and then change this to Soft Light. So it gives me an HDR feel to this cake ball. I didn't HDR this. I didn't bring it into Photomatics, but it gives me that HDR feel without too many haloing or really nastiness. So I'm I'm okay with that. So now I need to make it appear as if this light source, which is coming from the background, is now beaming onto the front of this cake ball. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer and take the black brush I'm already on the brush tool so my computer just told me it yelled at me I'm gonna turn my volume down in case it yells at me again and I'm press the right bracket key and I'm gonna paint black on this I know it looks kinda of ugly right why are you painting black on it well I'm gonna to go to soft light and I'm also gonna press alt so that it only affects this uh, cake ball layer and drop the opacity and if I need to I can also put a layer mask on it and kind of paint away the areas that I don't want that shadow to affect with black it would help if I was with black I was in white why didn't you tell me I need to paint with black okay so get this to look like it really fits in this sunrise okay so it's a subtle change but it's a change enough to make it look realistic as if it's got a background light. I know this little highlight wouldn't be there and we can do some things to get rid of that highlight if we wanted to. I'm just going to leave it for now for the sake of the tutorial. But I would get really nitpicky with that detail and take that away. And Actually what I can do is just kind of take the uh, patch tool and select that area with the patch tool and then move it to another area on the cake ball and that will help to get rid of that stark highlight that was there that was kind of taken away and distracting from our light source. So now this is a movie poster. We need to make it feel as if it's a movie poster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my ruler in and get the middle of my photo. And I'm going to type cake ball. And I know my text is really small and it's now hidden behind this layer here. So what I need to do is move it out of there and put it up on top of the background layer and press uh, all that's already been fixed. Now I'm going to press Control T. And I want that to say cake ball, but I don't want it to be in all caps. There we go. Okay, I want this to be a little bit bigger, so I can press Control T. And again, when I press Control T, I hold Shift and I drag from the corner, make it larger. I'm going to take the C off of this cake ball, and you'll see why I'm doing that in a second. And make sure this match back up to the middle. And I'm going to make another C and make it really big. Control T. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to combine these two. So I press shift and I click, um, I can press control and click on both of them and that will blend them together. Press control E. Now they're, now they're one layer instead of two separate layers. And I'm going to bevel and emboss them. I want to make this movie poster, right? 
and add a little bit of a drop poster. Or a drop poster, a drop shadow. Whatever. Don't make fun of me. And let's give this like a catchphrase or something. Um, making sunrise that much better. Ooh, look at that. With it. Three dots. It's more dramatic. Three dots is always dramatic. And press Control T and make that slightly larger. Oops. Make sure you drag from the middle. And we're going to offset that a little bit. Bam. Make sure this is in the middle. And we're going to go to view and clear our guides so that, that annoying line isn't there. And let's get that a little closer. There we go. To our cake ball. And that's the basics of compositing. It's really simple, really quick tutorial. Uh, there's a, a whole lot you can get into with compositing, a lot more than an 11 minute tutorial can. But if you need to do some compositing in a pinch, this isn't really that bad of a deal. Um, it works out pretty well, and I like it all right. So that's compositing. I'm Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at everydayhdrgmail.com and look through the plethora of tutorials that I have on my website. There's tons. There's like 73 of them. Um, and who's counting, right? But <clears throat> they can really help you in your post-processing. And if you have any questions or even a specific tutorial in mind, please contact me, everydayhdr at gmail.com. I am Blake Rudis. Also, stop by stickymarshmallows.com to get my wife's awesome recipes on how you can make these cake balls also. And then you can go ahead and put your own little composite together with the cake ball in the sunrise. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great weekend. Challenge yourself. Do a little bit of compositing. See you next week.